See, the proteins are uh, heteropolymers of a fixed length. They are a linear chain of amino acids which are folded into a particular three-dimensional conformation determined by the sequence of amino acids in the chain. They consider the primary level. We can also classify the proteins as a complex high molecular weight organic compound consisting of combinations of amino acids in peptide linkages that contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Similarly, enzymes, they are also a specialized class of proteins. They are also proteins in, in general, which catalyzes chemical reactions within the cell. Enzymes are active proteins that can catalyze biochemical reaction. These are biomolecules required for both synthesis as well as breakdown reactions by living organisms. So first we can see what is an amino acid because as we said from the definition, the proteins are combined of amino acids. So from the name amino acids, we can know that this particular compound is going to have a carboxylic group and a uh, amino group and both are going to be the amino group is going to be attached in the alpha position. So, alpha amino acids, we can call them. So, there we have uh, amino acids. And depending upon this R, uh, the it can be an alkyl group or any aromatic group or it can also be a hydrogen. And we have many types of amino acids uh, like polar, non-polar, acidic, basic, neutral amino acids. So, we can classify the amino acids in that way. So these amino acids will combine together to form a dipeptide. Now we have taken an example of aspartic acid and uh, glycine. When they combine together, it re uh, water molecules removed and these are amide linkages formed. See, double bond O NH is amide linkage. But here we call it as a peptide. So a peptide bond is formed. So a amino acid, another amino acid combine together, they form a dipeptide. In case of a representation, we can show that here NH3 is present and then we have our glycine, then we have our uh, aspartic acid, then we have our free COH. So we have represented this uh, in a single identifier notation. So N terminal is C terminal. A tripeptide. Now the, with the same dipeptide, we are going to attach a cysteine. So we get a tripeptide. Similarly, we can have a combinations of amino acids and at the end we have C terminal carboxylic moiety at another end we will have a N terminal uh, NH2 group. What is a metalloprotein? It's a very simple definition. The protein or enzyme which is going to have a metal ion as a cofactor, it is called as a metalloenzyme or metalloprotein. And these metal ions which are going to be present in the protein or enzyme, they are going to be coordinated by the nitrogen, oxygen or sulfur belonging to the amino acids in the polypeptide chain or a macrocyclic ligand incorporated into the protein as we are seen in hemoglobin or myoglobin. We have a heme inside it. Okay, So that can be taken as an example of a macrocyclic ligand or in vitamin B12 also we can see the chlorine uh, macrocyclic ligand is present. So the presence of these metal are very very important to perform the functions such as redox reactions and which cannot be easily performed by that set of amino acids. The meaning, without the metal ion, only the apo enzyme or apo protein cannot do the function that it has to do. To do the function, the metal should be present inside the amino acid, inside the uh, protein or enzymes. So we will come to our topic transfer. So this is how the st structure of a transfer looks like. The transfer structure is here in ribbon structure. And the binding site is present here and we can see a brown color uh, uh, spherical which is an ion atom. We have enlarged it and we have shown it. There is a carbonate. It is very important for the binding of ion 